YouTubers. Good morning, it's Rob Mavid. Guys, I think we got a pretty cool video today. We're going to be talking about pwn softening. <laughs> no, for real, don't don't hang up on me now. Wait a minute. <laughs> this is a really cool video for anybody who's a prepper or a fisherman or somebody who's just interested in different types of food they never had before. Um, this is a really fascinating study I found. I have been wanting to come up with a way to cook fish that are really small and bony that people don't normally eat because more and more there's less and less fish available out there and there are some fish that's very plentiful but because they may have a very strong taste or maybe they're a little fishy or they've got a lot of bones or they're really too small they're they're just underutilized and I was thinking I eat sardines all the time they have bones in them uh, well, you could just put them in the, the uh, pressure cooker. So I said, did some studies on how to pressure cook our fish, and I came across this study. Not only do they show the methods used in the study, how to uh, pressure cook fish in an optimum way, but also how to eliminate uh, either a fishy smell or a, uh, an ammonia smell for different types of fish. And it goes into a very... Uh, detailed specific ways they used in this study. The study was back from 1986. Bone softening, a practical way to utilize small fish. Um, it says that there's a need to because uh, so often people around the world they're used to eating fillets of fish which is not too economical because first of all you're really discarding a large part of the fish. Um, that's another reason I got interested because it's kind of disrespectful to the fish you're only eating like a third of it, you know, you, <laughs> and you're throwing the rest away. That's just, I feel it's not right. So um, they came up with a way called bone soften, basically get pressure cooking. And um, they, they clean it, remove the head and the guts and so on. And then uh, after they pressure cook it, you can't detect the bones. So uh, these are the, in the study, they use different fish, rockfish, sand dabs. These are all West Coast fish, sole, dover, ratfish, uh, jack mackerel, Pacific mackerel, yellowfin tuna, goosefish, monkfish, so on. All the fish were small, less than 11 inches. They took the frozen fish after they were cleaned, they froze them. And uh, they, they uh, put them in an autoclave and tested them at different temperatures and pressures. And then they began the experimentation. Now, uh, they also weren't interested just in finding ways to uh, optimize uh, the pressure cooking process to eliminate the uh, avail uh, the sensation of having bones, but they also wanted to work on the 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 odor and also whether it was moist, how it had a, a taste or felt in your mouth. Like, w did it have like a, a good taste? Or was it mushy, or, or or was it too dry, and so on? So they were working for a, trying to get a lot of things soft. Um, the experiments conducted to improve the texture and moistness of bone softened fish. Uh, these trials entailed pre-treatment of the fish by soaking dressed fish overnight in cold salt sodium chloride brine solution. So they put the fish in a brine solution overnight before they they. Uh, put them in the pressure cooker. But they also did several other things. They added citric acid and sodium tripolyphosphate, TPP. But here's where it really gets fascinating. Something I've never heard anybody use before or try before, and I've been messing around with fish my whole life. It said to remove the fishy odor of some species, we use extracts of powdered Japanese green tea in the salt brine solution. So Whereas the other solutions, they use the brine with citric acid or the brine with TVP. In one case, they use brine with different types of tea, green tea and the black tea, and different temperatures and so on. Now, when they tested the fish, different people eating it, there were four categories. One, they could detect the bones. Two, they were slightly noticeable when eaten. Three, completely undetectable and eaten. And fourth, uh, they would have the bones crumble easily after you touch them with your finger. Primarily, they were trying to achieve category four and three. 
So the results of the bone softening trial. Um, they used 10 species of fish and they cooked for 40 minutes in a pressure cooker after they had been brined with the different solutions. They found that the lowest temperature, 116 degrees centigrade, was sufficient to soften the bones of almost all the fish satisfactorily. Now, what were the effects of the cooking temperature, pressure, and time? They found out that the prolonged cooking time did not result in any increase in the softening bone. What in increased the softening bone was the temperature and the pressure. Increasing the cooking temperature from 110 to 116 and 121 markedly softened the bones as was found in the first experiment. At 116 degrees centigrade, a cooking time of 25 minutes was sufficient to soften the bones of jack mackerel. Effects of fish size. They found that the size of the fish did not so much matter as the size of the bones. Now, effects of cooking time, really it was not, it didn't matter. Here you have cooking times 25, 30, 45, 50 minutes, and they got the same results at 110. At 116, all the same results. 121, all the same results. So the time isn't that as important as the pressure and the temperature. So it says that the specific composition of the bone was more important than fish size in determining whether the bones became soft. The minimum, minimum cooking temperature. Now it looks like everything uh, would get soft, I think, at uh, 127, but some fish would, would, the bones would get soft much, much lower temperatures. A cooking temperature of 120 degrees centigrade was sufficient to soften bones of nearly all species. Now, here's another interesting thing. The tea concentration, it deodorized the fish, but specifically the specific Pacific sardines and Zach mackerel. At 0% grams of tea, the, the Pacific sardine was very fishy and the Jack mackerel was fishy. But at 2 grams of tea and 1 liter of water, it was only slightly fishy. And at 2.5 grams of tea and 1 liter of water, there was no fishy odor in the sardines or the Jack mackerel. And as the concentration of tea increased, um, you eventually started getting a tea odor. But the uh, sweet spot was two and a half grams of tea and one liter of water. So this is information I've never heard anybody talk about anywhere. It's pretty interesting. Now citric acid, you can purchase that on Amazon, but also you can, <laughs> it. I don't know what the concentration would be though, but you also have it in uh, uh, like citrus uh, juice, like uh, lemon juice or lime juice, which is commonly used with fish to get rid of odors <laughs> uh, and make it taste better. Um, here it talks about the citric acid, the amount used, and the time and the concentration. It also tells you how to arrive at the concentrations. Now for deodorization, they found that Chinese black tea and the green tea worked well equally, but the black tea discolored the fish, so they recommend the green tea. To get uh, the concentration, two and a half grams of green tea and one liter of water was sufficient to deodorize at least one kilo of small pelagic species. That would be like sardines or jack mackerel, as opposed to a bottom fish, like sole. Uh, to reduce the ammonia odor in short belly rockfish and Pacific whiting, they tried citric acid. Now, different solutions worked differently with different fish different temperatures and pressures work different with different fish so you want to experiment with the, the type of fish you have but you need to know that this process is available. Um, texture and moistness. This is important because you could have absolutely no detectable bones, you could have a flavor that was good but if the texture was weird or you didn't have the right moistness you wouldn't want to eat it. I've had shark before and just had the strange like Part of it was soft and part of it was hard. It was like pieces of cardboard in your mouth. It just, I couldn't eat it. It would just, it, it didn't taste bad, but the texture was just weird. So I couldn't eat it. So that's a texture and moistness are a very important part of the process. And look what they found. 
The flesh of jack mackerel soaked overnight in a 2% salt solution before cooking was juicy and firm compared to the control of no salt, which was water and soft. However, a 1.5% solution was not effective and a 3-point solution was dry. So it's like uh, Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> you got to get to the right percent. In this case, for Jack Mackerel, it, too low was not good, too high was not good. 2% in the middle was fine. So that's pretty interesting. So here they go into more detail about the different fish they use and different temperatures and so on. Um, it said, once again, the lowest temperature used, 116 degrees centigrade, generally resulted in the best texture and moisture. So it looks like that's a sweet spot for everything, 116 degrees centigrade. Now, uh, for the uh, try the, the the disagreeable odor, they say it comes from trimethylamine. Uh, said the disagreeable odors can also be decreased by using minimum times and minimum temperatures when cooking fish in the autoclave. So thus it is possible to manufacture satisfactory bone softened products even with pelagic species which characteristically contain higher levels of TMAO like sardines and jack mackerel. <laughs> they went to Japan or got fish from Japan where this process is very popular and already in, in place and they tried it with the American uh, public. It said the bone softening method used in Japan is essentially the same as that described here but fish with coatings of various flavors are marketed including curry, cream and parsley and tomato. In addition some uncoated bone softened fish are sold used in salads and other dishes and so on. So they tried this out to learn how U.S. consumers might react to uh, the bone softened products. We obtained from Japan samples of bone softened and breaded sardine. It said most tasters, tasters like the flavor and texture of the product. Uh, negative comments related mainly to the addition of calories in the oil. So this is how the process went. They took fresh or frozen fish, they dressed them, cleaned them, washed them. They cured overnight in a brine or a brine with uh, citric acid or a brine with DPP or a brine with green tea. They cooked in a pressure cooker, 120 degrees centigrade for 40 minutes. However, as it noted in the study, uh, a, uh, I think 116 uh, centigrade was even better for some fish. Uh, for less time. And they uh, then cooled it, then they added batter, and they uh, they froze and packed. Actually, I think they cooked it. <laughs> At some point in here, you got to cook it. <laughs> so if you have small fish that's available to you that are not commonly eaten in your area because they have too many bones, they taste poor, they're too fishy, or if they have an ammonia smell, this looks like an interesting way you might be able to eliminate the odors, eliminate the ammonia and the bones and have yourself perhaps something tasty or in times of trouble uh, something that's nutritious that would help you thrive and survive. So uh, I think it's a fascinating study. 1986, I haven't seen anybody talk about this before and the part about the green tea to me was very interesting. So guys, I hope that was well, it's cool for you. I put on new videos every week. Been doing it for 16 years. Got over 1,200 videos and a bunch of cool playlists on my channel. It's a variety channel. You never know what you're going to find because I put on new stuff all the time. And I got a bunch of cool people I feature on my channel. No relation to me. They would deny it anyway. <laughs> Go, so guys, check out my playlist. I got a whole thing on uh, cooking and on prepping and on do-it-yourself and all sorts of stuff. All right, guys. Take care and uh, let's go get some fish. <laughs> All right, take care. See you out there.